It's your girl here, Grace. Um, based in the United States, you already know, specifically Virginia. Um, I'm here with nobody but Bishop. You might know him as Bishop, but to me, he's my father, and I call him Daddy. Um, Daddy, how are you doing today? I am wonderful, Grace. I miss you so much, and all the people that used to follow you, they've been asking of Grace, Grace, Grace. Today, ladies and gentlemen, my daughter is back. Grace is in the house. Grace, what's up? Nothing much, just life has been life in, as you know, and I'm very glad to be back. I missed y'all, and I just love it to get the, when I get the chance to sit with you, to talk with you, and when you impart some of your wisdom onto me, and I know all of you guys missed it too, so we're back and better, and I hope you all are ready. Daddy, I just have a few questions for you today. Okay. I mean, not even questions, because you know... I'm your daughter, so it's mm -hmm. more like a discussion. Yes. Um, I see that you do a lot of charity work, and the one that really touches my heart the most is when you honor um, the police officers here mm -hmm. in the United States mm -hmm. through Faithful Servants Award. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love that you do that, but what about Ghana? Because you know that's where you come from. I do... Why don't you ever do something like that for the police in Ghana also? Grace, first of all, I want to thank America for what America stands for and what America do. The police service in America comes with a lot of integrity, honesty, and they stand by the law and justice, which is very good. I must confess that uh, I, I feel very proud as a Ghanaian in America who God is blessed with the opportunity to uh, honor the police service in America every year. Um, it, will, it, will, it will be my greatest desire in life to be opportune to have a chance to honor the police service in Ghana too, especially now that the president, His Excellency Nane Kufuado, appointed uh, Ekufu, Dampare Ekufu, the current IGP, I must confess that they are doing very well. The police in Ghana, they are doing very, very, very well with the limited resources available to them and the training they have. I feel, I, I wish I would use this opportunity to speak directly to the president of Ghana, His Excellency Nane Kufuado, and the current uh, Inspector General of Police, that I wish that the same thing that we've been doing in America for the police services, the president, his national security services, and the IGP will also come together. If possible, they will opportune us to do this together with them so that once a year we can come together and honor the good police services in the country just to motivate others, other policemen that are not doing right. They should look at others being honored from the northern region, from the Vuta region, from the central region, all of them are invited to Accra uh, in the presence of the president of Ghana for them to be honored. I wish that President Tekufuado, uh, His Excellency, will opportune us a chance to do this for the Ghana police services because they are doing well. Some of them are doing very well. And at this time, there is nothing more than for us to come together and honor good policemen that are doing very good work in the country to support the Ghana police. They deserve commendation. They deserve uh, accolations. They deserve to be appreciated. So, President Ekufuado, Papa, His Excellency, this is Bishop Adontem Boateng here. My daughter asked me a question, and I'll be so proud, just as I am opportune to help and support the police in America, that we can even do the same thing in Ghana to honor good policemen, support them, elevate them, and let them be proud of their work. That it's not just the bribe they take that makes them anything, but the commitment and the integrity, integrity to duty that they do, that we have to come together and appreciate them. So, President, and uh, Dan Pari Ekufu, Ekufu, the IGP, please, let us come together and let us do something for the Ghana Police Service. It will go a long way to motivate them for us to change Ghana one minute at a time. Thank you. Okay, 
that's I'm very glad yes, to hear on. you say that. I'm very that's I hope they are listening and they'll reach out to you about it. But Daddy, I just wanna also ask, is this are you just gonna focus on police or first responders? Because you know it's not just police that also do this, they have firefighters and stuff. Would they be you see, even now when you get to Ghana, the immigration service, the, the professionalism of their work, it's, it's enticing, it's beautiful. So if I have my way, in America, we will deal with the police service and the, the sheriff and all that stuff, but in Ghana, it's different. So for us to do this nationally, to bring everybody down to Accra, to honor them, I feel that we must also invite the immigration services we should invite the um, the fire service people and all the security services to have a very big event to honor good Ghanaians that are doing good work to support the country so that it becomes an example to others that, hey, if you do good, at the end of the year, someone is watching, you'll be appreciated. Nationally, you'll be recognized. Everybody wants recognition. So to change Ghana for the better. I feel that this will also go a long way to help our country power because, Grace, if you go there, the work some of the police people are doing now, they are doing very well. They, they, they put Ghana first at heart and it's beautiful. You know, they, we need to come together to honor such police services, immigration services, customs and all the um, first responders that are in the country. They, they, they don't have, they don't have the 911 inform them. If you call the 911, that one, they will come tomorrow. Ghana, that one. <laughs> they don't have the what's it said, Ambul ambulance service, right? Yeah. That one is not good. But otherwise, the police, the customs and few of the security services in Ghana, Greece, they are doing very well. They've, they've come a long way. But you know, and if we start acknowledging them, appreciating them, it will motivate others to also be better. We change the country one minute in an hour. Little by little, me sure say gonna be ye. What else, Grace? Let's talk, man. Okay, so just just to shift gear a yeah, little bit, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, Christmas is coming up, mm -hmm. and in America here, Christmas is more like given. And I mean, I grew up in Ghana, but not really that well. What is Christmas like in Ghana? Like, what is the dynamic? Is it the Chris, same here, like given, or they just Christmas like, is part? Christmas is part in Ghana. People who have been eating chicken before they will eat chicken. People who have been dressed before they will dress. And they will dress and wear shades. And kids have toys everywhere. It is, it is the biggest festival of the country. And it is good to see everybody moving. The whole, the economy of the country is bubbling. It's beautiful. The only difference is that in America, we don't really do Christmas. Christmas to us is a change of gift. Ghana, if you, my daughter, what you expect of me is a member of Brunia, dear. And yes, they also expect gift, but they are, they are gifting a small demand that they even bring our mommy here because they feel, say, in the season is a moment of giving. So Christmas is a whole party in Ghana. I mean, people go to parties, people do events everywhere. So around this time, the, 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 the key has been unlocked. Everybody is going, everybody is coming. Unlike here, here on Christmas, we say, let it snow, let it snow. Once it snowed on Christmas Day, they did blow your power. <laughs> <laughs> but Africa is not like that. Hey, Grace, Christmas. Hmm. And then that's when the thieves, everybody, that's why you see thieves, Grace. Oh. If you want to see Christmas, you see the best of Ghana, you see the worst oh. of Ghana. That's why you see arm robbers and pickpockets. If you are carrying a bag, you must carry your bag like that because it will be better. If you have your phone, they will snatch it. That's the season because everybody is going and coming. If you're going, going. If you're coming, coming. And that's it. So that's the difference for Christmas. But a uh, party time, big time party time in our country. So that you've been here for a while. Would you say, um, do you ever miss spending Christmas in Ghana? Or... Oh no, I'm too old. Great, you know, you know, I'm 50 years, right? I'm, I'm too but old. But Christmas doesn't matter if you're young or old, though, or not. No, but baby, I'm here. Dear, be on that. Grace, I have seen parties. I have seen. So, so when you do, baby, yeah. Now, if you, it's me, me, dreaming home. So, the the 13 year old, 
17 year old, 18 year old who wants to go and shake and bubble their body. Now I'm old, I don't want to do that. I want to think about money. I'm looking for financial security. I'm looking for uh, to circle myself around people who can support me because I'm growing old. So I'm not really worried about missing uh, Christmas in Ghana. I would like to go make a donation to some poor people, but to go party around, Grace, I'm too old for that, you know? Please, you guys heard it first. Yes, okay, yes, okay, yes, okay, yes. okay, okay. Go party okay, and see Ghana. That's, that's really mm -hmm. nice. But, um, Daddy, you talked about like focusing on donations mm -hmm. and doing like businesses. Mm -hmm. Um, so for now, I, I I saw that you started an orphanage, mm -hmm. and how is that going so far? Grace, I, I, I hate to. So, Initially, I called it an orphanage, but I don't call it an orphanage anymore. Mm -hmm. they, they, they are in my house. I'm their father. I'm their grandfather. I'm their father. I love those kids so much. And if I see them happy, my life is fulfilled. Sometimes I tell myself on the day I die, I pray that these children will come and cry for me. That's all that I want to see. Um, life is beautiful when we're able to impact others. When we're able to give people the hope of tomorrow because life is crazy you can never understand life these children they don't have parents they don't have anybody and yes by the grace of god now they have people in the ministry that have taken them but grace when they see them it's as if there was a total light off and there's a light on the excitement in the children alone grace oh my god so I'm very happy that God has opportunity me to be a blessing for the children. They are doing very well, and I'm not praying that I'll be able to go buy them some computers for them to start computer classes okay. in, the, in, the, in the house. So that's about it. What else? I um, just wanted to talk about also um, relationship. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of... Um, back and forth about um, submission, which is a very, very touchy thing these days um, mm. that people talk about. So, like, what is your view on the women submitting in this day and age? Grace, this topic, I speak and I speak passionately about it. From my aged days now and understanding life, Humans, I won't go to the Bible for people to say that, oh, they are quoting the Bible to control people, but just life. From the way nature made humans, if your father is living with you as I knock on wood, my wife, it is expected that two of us has to live in partnership together. But even in the partnership, for, for there to be order, there is the need for one to be on top, for the other one to also be a subordinate. Meaning that even though we are equal partners, we do everything equally. Sometimes one must be honored to lead because two people cannot lead. One must lead for another to follow. The way nature made life, it is expected that the man becomes the head or the lead. If anybody is a lead, I'm the lead in this church. Anybody who wants to be part of this church must submit or respect or honor or give me my place in position in life. If you go to the Bible in Ephesians 5, sorry, the Bible category says that wives must submit to their husbands. You know, one of the problems we have when tension comes into relationship, submission becomes difficult. When the men lie, submission becomes difficult. When people are not telling the truth, submission becomes difficult. But Grace, apart from the lies or maybe little cheating or abuses that makes it difficult for a woman to submit to the husband. As a woman, once you're in a man's life and you're in a relationship, it is necessary to respect your husband it is necessary to submit, to give him his place in life 
Grace, your husband wants to have sex with you. You cannot just stop and tell him, get away from me. I don't want to do nothing. For submission, even though you might not be in the mood, you want to also submit to him and make sure he is cool. So submission is very critical for two people who wants to marry to be able to coexist. The man by nature is born with the notion that he is a man. So once he comes into your life, he came and proposed to you. That is why it is when you want to marry a woman, you got to go spend money. You got to go show your manship. Once he comes showing his manhood and he takes you home, it is expected that at least he, he honored you, you will afford him some respect. Otherwise, this is where fight comes. This is where the men get angry. This is where relationships break apart. It is necessary if you want to have a lasting relationship that you build in your heart to submit to your husband or your man. That is how you can coexist in the house and you'll be happy and he will also be happy. You understand my point? Uh -huh. These days, uh, some of the people, especially in America, here in New York and other places, the women, they are, the problem they have is that they don't have control over their hearts. Initially, they are sweet, they are nice. After they exist for a while, they are hot. They don't have gate to control their heart. They go out flipping and flopping and saying so many things. They destroy relationships. You understand my point? But it is necessary once again that as a woman for you to maintain a lasting relationship, for you to submit to your man. I hope I made sense to you. Yeah, you made a lot of sense, and I like your input on that also. Mm. Um, but in terms of like the submission part, the part mm. that kind of baffles my mind is mm. submission. It's in the Bible. Mm -hmm. So w how does that transfer like into a worldly world where let's say there's a couple the, the husband is not religious but as soon mm. as they get married that's when they remember submission but they're not following they don't per se like follow the bible but yet they choose to pick that part of submission it, 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 it is it is nature nature built thought in the mind of every man that he is the head of the household like I gave you the uh, illustration with the partnership. Grace, if you and your father were in a relationship, husband and wife, we're supposed to be partners. The Bible says you should, you should be my equal partner. You should support me. But in this support, we cannot just keep going. One must be a lead for the other to follow. So it is nature, nature created thought in the minds of every man that he is the head of the household. It is not Bible. It is just life. The only thing is that the Bible emphasizes it more. Wives submit. Wives submit. But every man, even the, the eight years, two of us, once he marries, he wants to be the lead in the house. Once he's the lead, you must submit to him. This is how we can coexist. So it's not just Bible. The Bible is only for Christians. They are not quoting out of place out of the Bible, but it's just human nature in their mindset that for every man that he, I'm the head of the household and the patriot of the, the family. This is where I want to go. If you're not listening to them, then they feel like, hey, you're out of place. You get it? So it is necessary, even when men misbehave and all that stuff, once they bring you into their house as a wife or in a relationship, they expect some level of respect and submission. You understand my point? Mm. It's not just Bible, but it's just life. And nobody taught us, but I think when we came, Adam or somebody told us to go and we all follow. That's it. <laughs> okay. okay. So also, to touch back on what you talked about, mm. you, you mentioned, this is a little bit TMI, guys, mm. but it's yo, a father yo, what, and daughter what is conversation. TMI? So you talked what? about, like, do not, the woman should not, Hold, withhold sex from mm. their partner. Mm. But I, I thought, I mean, we're all adults here, y'all. Yeah. I thought sex is supposed to be enjoyable for two people. So how can somebody be upset, but yet they're expected to still do it with their husband, even though they're upset because of submission? Grace, you see, when it comes to sex, sex is a man's power. Mm. Sex is a man's strength. That is why some men go about having sex with men, they feel good. 
if, if you see a woman running around with sex, people don't respect it because that is not norm. This is not Bible, but norm. Okay. So even in the misgiving among happy and stuff, if you're submitting to the husband and your husband is not forcing you in terms of rape, but he comes appealing to you, even though you guys have issues and you are not happy, the best time I feel for any of you to resolve issue is during intimacy and intercourse. So if you don't want the trouble to transcend from today to tomorrow and the next day, once he's coming close, if there's anything to address with him, I think that's the time. You should not be angry and wake up with your anger. If, if he's coming close, so I believe that that's the time to solve the problem. You understand my point? And unless some men are abusive, they beat the woman and they want to have sex with them, that is so wrong. You cannot do that. You're treating the hell like an animal. But otherwise, if just I'm not happy about something he has done, and these are adults, like you said, and we can resolve it. When the man is coming around, that is the appropriate time, Grace, to say, hey, stop. Kwame, why? Why this? Why are you trying to put my life at risk? Why are you trying to do this? Why are you doing this? You understand my point? Okay, I am sorry. I won't do that again. You promise. So that you see there's a compromise. There is some form of relationship here. But when she's angry over a little thing, some women, you cannot even joke with them. You're joking with them, they're angry. I can't have sex with you three days. Bipolar. If it's not bipolar, it's schizophrenic. If it's not schizophrenic, it's... Um, but I couldn't grab for anything. Uh, oh, those people... <laughs> I'll think about it. I'll tell you later. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. okay. Uh, Cincinnati. No, it's not Cincinnati. Cincinnati is a state. Uh, the schizophrenic? No, no, no. The, the, the people who, they will create the problem and then they try to be emotional as if they try to make themselves as if they are the victims. Oh, that's, that's, I, I forgot the name of that one. Yes, 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 yes. You have, <laughs> have to define that. There's Gaslighters? a lot of... Gaslighters? The, no, guys like this are crazy, another crazy form, but not here today. <laughs> this is oh, narcissistic. Oh, narcissistic. But that, is, that, that what is a lot of men. Oh. I have yet to see a woman that's oh, the, the woman because you're a woman and you have been dealing with men. <laughs> but there's a lot of men <laughs> and there's a lot of women. And those people they don't write on their forehead. <laughs> and you know one thing about those narcissists, if the men men that are narcissistic, you know what about them? <laughs> Grace, if they find you, Grace, they will even buy you a car. Mm -hmm. They will buy you out. Later, they will come and take it, though. <laughs> but initially, they will bomb you with so many gifts. Yeah, that, that's called love bombing. It, it's part of na the, the, the definite narcissistic, oh. yeah. Until they bomb you with all the gifts, mm. and then you to you open all your legs. <laughs> Grace, then later you come home, they're angry. Why are you angry? I don't want to talk. <laughs> I don't want to talk. That's when their trouble starts. Mm -hmm. And they've been crushing lots of women. And there are women like that. Mm -hmm. If you go into a relationship with them, they are unpredictable. They can be upset over little stuff. And those are the people who punish their partners a lot in sex because they are, they are, their spirit keeps moving around. So today they are uh, Rita. Tomorrow they are Arita. The next day they are a retainer. So the, the, the personality keeps changing and moving all over the places. No, narcissistic people, there's a lot of men like that. There's a lot of women. They are unstable. You cannot predict within them. If you're staying with them, it's as if you're working on eggshells. Mm -hmm. Anytime you hear quack, quack means one broke, something <laughs> has happened. It's there like that. Yeah, yeah. You know. So, Daddy, with people like that, how do you live with them? You have Is to there... run away. <laughs> <laughs> narcissistic people you can't stay with them you, you know the problem mm -hmm. they don't want to leave mm -hmm. if they want to leave then it means they are tired of you but narcissistic people don't want to leave but for some reason they they feel like they've gotten you as a slave they keep swinging moods and playing with your mood they want you to come and pamper them and procure them and then they can be so nice because they can be so nice all of a sudden nothing happened and why are you quiet? I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk. Narcissistic. Oh my God, I'm old. <laughs> jai, jai, but jai, jai. a lot of men and women like that though, because they said they always say they like their women a little bit crazy. So what is that? No, Grace, Grace. 
If you love your woman crazy, let me explain to you. If you love, men love women that are crazy because she'll come and pull my shirt. Hey, Jai, Jai, Jai. You know why we like that? It, it, it's fun. It's sweet. She's crazy. She's bubbly. And she's enjoying. But Grace, that's not that craziness. <laughs> the narcissistic craziness. Sure. They can even move from the house and go and live somewhere for a week and come back. And when they come back, they come... <laughs> My grace, narcissistic people, stuff, mm -hmm. and it, it's a whole generation of people. If men tell you they want a woman that is crazy, they come while I'm doing this, they'll come and pull your shirt. Oh, jai jai, oh, jai then they, they're pulling you. Men like that because everywhere I go, I'll be missing you. Hey, grace, why I'm going to me. Oh, so there's a difference. There's a difference. difference. Narcissistic and toxicity, bipolar. If you find a man like that, run. Because by the time they live your life, you are emotionally damaged. They damage you emotionally. Sometimes you even begin to lose yourself. You go to an hour and say, We need to find out your boy. Because of some of the things they do. And you know, Grace, that's, that's not what they're talking about. What they're talking about, about crazy, women that are crazy, they're looking for a woman that is bubbly. She'll come and sit on you. Your friends are there. She'll come and kiss you. Oh, she'll come and hit your head with something. She's so like a playful? Playful, yeah. Okay. 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 But the crazy one, narcissistic, toxic, toxic, and bipolar. Hey! Okay. No bro, so shan is, is there a playful way for um, the women? Like, what is the equivalent for a man that is that way that a woman was so like? A, a man with a good sense of humor. Okay. Hi, crazy. Hey, Grace, I know we give you a joke, Grace. And then he will go tomorrow and buy you another wig. Honey, your wig, you know, I saw one, I bought it for you. He, he's trying to tell you he owns you. You belong to him. So he's, try, he's buying you stuff. He's playing with you. He's making you laugh. But the women that are narcissistic or men, you cannot joke like that with them. Once you joke like that, they will take it offense. Oh. And see, the environment is always tension. Mm -hmm. Environment is, you cannot even joke, common joke, because they are narcissistic. And their mood keeps swinging. It keeps swinging. It keeps swinging. And see, when you're happy. But if you find a man that has a good sense of humor, a man who understands women and respects women, who wants to make a woman happy, hey, Grace, I pray in the name of Jesus that Lord bless my daughter Amen. with a man like that. Amen. Not a chisel man. No. Not a narcissistic. <laughs> no. Not like Nikwe. In Jesus' <laughs> Jesus name. Amen. 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 Um, Hmm. Daddy, I have this one is a little bit. That's I the know last somebody. One. This uh, is the last one. Yeah. Uh, always, always it means it. you say you know somebody. <laughs> so somebody of course. Okay, okay. And we're never gonna disclose yes, that. Yes. Okay. So, in African culture, mm -hmm. like when you date a guy, I don't know how African men were raised, but mm. no matter how bad they are, they have a sense of like taking care of a woman. Like, for here. I know somebody that went out on a date with mm, a guy mm. and when the bill came he pushed it like we're gonna go 50 50. i have yet seen an african he was an african guy and i'm like are they learning different ways now because Be i've never witnessed that before <clears throat> because grace you see if i go out let's say with you on a date and you have five friends that are allowed them to come in Africa, and that's why I show you my manhood. Mm. I'll pay for it. Even if I have to go and tell the waiter that he, me, you have to do that. It is the worst thing for any man who takes a woman on a date and the bill comes and it says, let's share. I know it's the culture in America here, yeah, people do that, but it's not supposed to be so. These days, can I tell you something? Mm. So many, many black American women are looking for African men, Nigerian men, or Ghanaian men, because we take care of women. Uh, I, I, nobody taught us that. It's just our mindset that only Obaipia or Saudi 
So the worst thing for any guy to do is to take a woman out on a date. The bill comes and then you push the bill before her to pay for it. It's not supposed to be so. Women are like flowers. They are supposed to be pampered. Women are like flowers. They are supposed to be worshipped. They are supposed to be adored. They are supposed to be beautified. So if you share a, a dating bill with a woman, you are insulting her. You understand my point? Mm -hmm. Unless it's a business, even if it's a business partner and I'm there, it's not because I have money, but it's my nature to take care of that bill. So a guy should never do that. I know this is in America, but an African guy, if a guy do that to you or any of your friends, wink at your friend and tell her, run away from him. Mm -hmm. You don't want to go into a relationship with somebody that is going to disadvantage you. As a woman, even if you get a million dollars and he gets one dollar, if he comes so strong like that to share stuff with you, he's disadvantaging you because you are a weaker vessel. Mm. He's supposed to adore you and to pamper you, to pamper. How beautiful it is that Grace, you finish eating and I'm on a date today, I said, I've taken care of yeah. the bill. Oh, the best. You understand? Mm. If, if you go home with such a man, mm. Or you go home with such a woman. She also wants to go, unless one of those narcissistic people gets, but otherwise she also wants to go out of her way to make sure you are happy. You understand my point? So please, if you're watching me and you're an African guy, you go on a date with women and you have been sharing the bills with them. Yes, you more than come with Amen. Amen. I don't have anything to say. <laughs> <laughs> you can cut it.